Welcome home to Pimento. I'm Tommy Beavis, and I have the pleasure of leading Pimento Jamaican Kitchen right here in Minneapolis. But my story doesn't start here as a restaurateur. It starts right in the kitchen of my grandmother, Babe Lou, on the streets of Kingston. Even though she had built her own empire, she still used food to heal and connect her community. And so Pimento naturally embodies that spirit of my grandmother, Babe Lou, not just in the food, but in its purpose. After coming home from work every day, missing my culture and my grandmother's food, right? I'd fire up the grill in my backyard and the neighbors would smell the food come over. And also my coworkers from my corporate job would know about the backyard vibes. And so fast forward a year later, we took my backyard grill and a hundred dollar ten from a local store. And with those same friends and neighbors and former coworkers serving as volunteers, we were able to take that little business and grow it into Pimento Jamaican Kitchen. Growing up in Jamaica, I had the pleasure of watching my family build their own businesses from scratch. And so I had that natural entrepreneurial knack in my spirit, you know, and yet for some reason, I was more passionate about helping others and serving communities. When we talk about equity, I don't think that we can say that there's just one way to do equity. It has to impact every single aspect of our cultures and communities. I think when we can find leadership that that is not based on programs and activities that, that they have created in the past, but that is grounded on principles of what is institutionally anti-racist, what is fundamentally racial equity, what does it mean to be to, to pursue social justice in our research, our teaching, and our service engagement. Um, that has to permeate and start start at the leadership level. It's not just stopping the bad practice, it's how do we make somebody whole after generations of these bad things have happened. If not now, when are we going to really make this a better place, not just for people of color, but we have to liberate the entire population. We have to liberate everybody to where um, we can also have that economic liberation where we can all continue to grow. George Floyd's murder hit me as hard as it would hit any human who has human dignity and human decency and human respect for human life. So I allowed myself to go in my garage, lock the door, watch the video and allow myself to bawl. And it's because as somebody who's been in the food industry, I've seen animals get harvested. And to see a human treat another human like one treats an animal with very little regard for their humanity, it crushes one. I wasn't surprised, like most black people, whether it's here in Minneapolis or London or Mombasa or Lagos or Kingston or Port-au-Prince or Brazil, we have these issues where authority is literally killing us. And so I came in and I'm holding space for my employees uh, the following day, which happens to be my birthday, ironically. <laughs> um, and I never work on my birthday, but I'm like, no, I think I, I just gotta go to work. We gotta get through this together. And so I, there I am trying to comfort my, my employees. I'm like, don't worry, we're just gonna have a summit on this, guys. And they're like, but wait, 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 wait. We're hungry right now. The supermarkets are closed due to COVID and or due, due to being afraid of riots. We're hurting right now. We can't have a conversation about what the city or the system needs to do differently. We're in pain. 
And as a Jamaican, I had to step back and listen to the African Americans and understood the pain they felt or they feel. And understand it's a pain that none of us who, quite honestly, have lived that experience can really truly appreciate. And so the healing that has to be done um, was very important. And so as a result, what we decided to do was um, we want to focus on the food portion of it. Through the employees and the community and the volunteers, they organized their own food drive. And we're like thinking, oh yeah, you know, we'll get a couple of cases of water, you know, maybe a paper towel. And within two to three days, we literally had to close our restaurant because we were overwhelmed with donations. It was a great feeling to know that the rest of our neighbors saw the video, felt our pain, showed up to do something, just anything. It was just so powerful to see also the cadre of volunteers who came out. We had a full army of people who just showed up saying, I'm ready to help, put me in. These are people who have never run a food bank. This is just the community saying, we need food, we're getting food, and we're distributing the food to our community. So quickly we'd have one line of cars. We took over the entire block, which is a three lane road, took over that entire block. And you'd have one lane of traffic coming down the street where we had people in the street directing traffic signaling where people should go, you know, almost like triaging in the middle of the streets. People collecting the donations, and then down the other block, each, for blocks, you just saw people who are waiting for food as well. We ensured that if nothing else, we treated them with dignity, provided them water and helped them. Um, but we also used that as an opportunity to really understand and hear what the community needed. That's the beauty of having a company that is truly reflective of the community. That was the first effort that we launched after Mr. Floyd was murdered because we recognized and heard directly from our community. They were hungry. But we also had to pivot and focus on the healing portion. So the following week after uh, Mr. Floyd's death, we then had yoga in the streets where we had um, poetry, art, Everybody coming out together to be like, you know, we're gonna take care of each other, we're gonna heal each other. And so we had murals, painting, and even though across the city, there were still ply boards on windows, we then encouraged local artists to come out and decorate those ply boards so they can reflect the pain, reflect the love, reflect the anger, reflect the hope of our community. It just moved from being a city that looked like a war zone to sort of like, an artist utopia where you just see rainbows everywhere and everybody coming together loving on each other because we were all hurting.